We're at the start of Blackwing Lair here. I'm playing on my Mutilate Rogue, who's uh, pretty geared so far. We're looking to get a Bloodfang Helmet today and a Venomous Totem to replace these two items. But we've got... I mean, honestly, we've got pretty much uh, all the gear... Almost all the gear we want, aside from that stuff already, uh, from Blackwing Lair. Uh, that's our gear. And our talent specialization is like this. Ooh, there's the Unstable Chromatic Drake. That's popping up because we're doing black mode um, on this Blackwing Lair. And the Black Trial changes each fight in a different way. The way it changes Razor Gore is it causes this big, fat, ugly drake to spawn during the egg cracking phase when you crack the 10th egg. So then you just need to split some of your raid DPS on the chromatic drake and the rest of the raid DPS on the adds that are spawning. But, uh... Not too challenging for Razor Gore, that's for sure. Ooh, it moved slightly. Okay. Anyways, should be fun. We don't have to do Expose Armor this week. It means we just get to crank. We've got a special gear set for Veil Stras. Uh, that removes some of our energy benefits, so we're going to use that. That's great. Go over here. Ooh, I'm standing in a bunch of fire. Okay, that's fine. Not really that big of an issue. Um, should I, like, not be running through that stuff, or what? Yeah, maybe we just let this fire despawn. I do have a fire protection potion. I, I would like to preserve that. So it can be used for when Razor Gore is actually up. Oh yeah, it's on death meter. Yeah, okay, here you go, damage. Eggs are more precious than you know. How many are left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, roughly. Now eight. Yep. to almost time. When this boss pops out, we're going to use free action potions so that we don't get uh, stunned by his war stomp ability. And if we can, we're going to try to have uh, slice and dice rolling uh, already uh, before like the boss comes up because then we don't have to cast it while the boss is up. Right? But that may not be possible. It's going to require, uh, you know, a mob to be up uh, right as the boss is spawning. So we're going to pay close attention here. See if we can get one of those. That guy's dead. Six seconds on my thing. The second to last egg. Maybe I should just enter stealth. Maybe that's better than trying to get the slice and dice going. Because that gives me, gets me the um, master subtlety buff. Okay. Decent. Depleted Scythe, Double Primeval Gloves, Gloves of Rapid Evolution. All right. Rebooting. Ah, I forgot to use Cold Blood. That's true.
Mm-hmm. Where are the notes? Don't worry about it. We already got Dream Eater. Five, four, three, two, one. You are persistent. Your ally Running in to the technicians. Not really a challenge to capture all these before they r run away. Get up and destroy them. I, they want to do a fire and an arcane and then a pull timer. Okay. Hmm. All right. Fire, then arcane. The arcane... The arcane is for the blue trial to absorb the arcane damage there. So we want one fire protection potion, then we want the arcane protection potion, then we blast the Avail Straz, and in this guild, uh, our players are not bitches, so uh, they unboon for Veil of Straz, okay? No, not none of this, uh, none of this weak, weak shit where um, they, they're like, oh my god, Veil of Straz, no, we can't unboon for Veil of Straz, what if someone dies? You just unboon and then no one dies, because you kill it way faster. And everyone has more health. This is our tank. 8,000 health uh, without world buffs. They're actually not even bringing a second tank. They're, the, the secondary tank, the Feral Druids, just go in cat mode. Full confidence. Love it. It's okay, we can 19 man the rest of the instance. Yeah, you need to clear it too. <laughs> Someone was trying to say that they need to hearthstone out of the instance and the raid leader immediately shut that shit down. Immediately that was not gonna happen. <laughs> All right, food buff. <laughs> and then they said, then they said, oh, you know, it's just trash you have to do after this. And it's like, yeah, you have to do the trash too. <laughs> you don't, you don't get to skip that. All right, fire resist juju, this juju, this one, uh, all that's good. Then we need to unboon. Uh, activate my ground scorepock assay also. Oh yeah, and then this is going to be 40 seconds of RP after this timer too. 5, 4, Okay. Here we go. Tell him he can pick up the world buffs when you when you're doing the boss that drops his loot. Yeah, please. Alright. Okay. Lame! 
Here we go. Starting Veil Stress 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, forgot to rupture. I forgot that my Veil Stress set has Carnage Rune. Okay, little bit of a scuff opener, but that's okay. That, I corrected it pretty quickly. go. Veilstraz loot, primeval leggings, not bad. Boots of pure thought, shimmering golden disc, pendant to the fallen dragon. So for Veilstraz, we use a special gear set because on Veilstraz, you get essence of the red, this debuff over here that gives you unlimited energy. So I unequip my Renataki's charm of trickery. I unequip my dream eater. Hang on. Let me show that again. Uh, Wrath of Ray gets swip, swapped in from Renataki's Charm of Trickery for Veilstraz. Dream Eater goes out for Perdition's Blade. I drop the six set bonus on Core Forged, and I, uh, yeah, right. Those are all basically energy bonuses, and I just do other things instead that uh, generate damage. And we still have Essence of the Red. Uh, so we can use it to mow down this trash if you move quickly. But if you sit around for five minutes trying to handle the loot, then it doesn't go as well. These are challenging uh, packs here. And they go way better when you have unlimited energy. <laughs> Let me tell you what. There we go. Ooh, damage dealers running away from the tanks, getting called out on voice chat. Yep. Yeah. Big pog damage. There we go. Pretty good. Gangrenosa, thank you for the gifted sub. A total of three gifted subs in the channel. Gangrenosa, I appreciate your generosity. I hope you're having a great day. Okay, we're switching to Filcher's Cowl. So we can stealth better, and it increases the range of our... The, mo the real reason we use it, because it increases the range of Disarm Trap. That makes it way easier to go through suppression room and disarm these traps if you've got your filters cowl. Oh, it also apparently has fan of knives on it. That's not really important. It's not like I'm going to be really doing anything. <laughs> Why is this whelp for oh i got a i think those spawned on top of me and then he just hit me all right if i can get this one all right i'm probably gonna be in combat for the rest of the suppression room that would be my guess
Yep. All right, we're trying our hardest. <laughs> no way to stay in stealth. They just drag these on top of me all the time. <laughs> that is what it is. Wait, I'm out of combat. Wait, I just didn't expect that at all. I wasn't even looking for it. I just assumed that was going to be impossible. Okay. Okay, that's a re-stealth. They've got those two. Okay. I can go up and get that one. Not that it's, like, important to get it, but I can. Okay. Okay, no problem. Oop. Hatcher on the way, so I'm gonna get out of the way. Go back to this cloak. Mm, and we'll have to refresh some buffs here. Oh, yeah, there, we just got yeeted by that hatcher. Okay, we're out of combat. Okay. They're talking about what they're doing. When he, when he teleports, it's not a threat drop. And what I've seen in my other groups is... If you have a second tank on the location before he even teleports, um, you can... Yeah, it, it's perfect. Yeah, so he's immobile until someone goes into melee range of him. So if someone's already on the location that he will teleport to, 
he teleports, and then he just immediately starts walking back to his primary threat target. I wasn't sure if they knew that strategy or not. I was trying to listen to what they were saying. And it seemed to me like they weren't going to do that. So I wanted to suggest it because it seems like super duper good. Whoever is doing expose armor for the week is the person that is... We give them all the bitch duties at once. Alright, Broodlord, Lash Lair, hopefully a Venomous Totem drops. If a Venomous Totem drops, I don't know if I'll get it or not. Uh, but we absolutely want that item. Venomous Totem, super duper good. Alright, here we go. Got all of our good stuff equipped, ready to go. Consumables active. Five, four, three, two. Pet is super One. slowed. It might die before it makes it there. Nope. We're good. Okay. How's the threat? Basically no threat yet. Ooh, that guy pulled threat. A little bit of a knockback there. Boss at 60, 55. Okay. So they didn't actually get someone over in position like they planned to because the boss was on a uh, target that they didn't it, it was on not on the intended tank yeah that was bad Primeval Boots, Hardened Elemental, Slag. I mean, like, it was scuffed because a damage dealer pulled threat. It would have been fine if, you know, our damage dealers throttled and didn't attack until the tanks actually established threat. I was, uh, it's always the DPS fault when the DPS pull threat. Just a hundred percent. All right. Killing some whelps. No venomous totem. Unlucky. Venomous totem seems rare. I haven't seen it drop that many times, and it's very, very good for this build. So it's kind of holding back my damage not uh, having it. Oh yeah, whoops. I forgot to actually enable this add-on. They use this add-on for this raid for loot distribution.
This is bugged like every week in this room. Someone's like stuck in combat. Think Broodlord is a fight worth using Shadow Step for? I don't know. All right, as it is every week, people are very flustered and upset about people being locked in combat. How is Venomous Totem good? Well, when you read what Venomous Totem does, it says it increases your poison application rate, and that's why it's good, because it increases your poison application rate. So all you have to do is read the item, and then it only does one thing. It's the only singular thing that could possibly make it good, because it's the only thing that it does. Alright. Let's do this. Oh, wait. I was shouldn't have rebuffed those short ones until it's uh, boss time. Use it whenever you want to use it. Don't worry about it. Trying to get on the spellbinder. There we go. up for that. Uh, they're both on cooldown. Damn. Bringing more trash mobs in. That's a spellbinder. Oh, where are you going? Oh, I'm polymorphed. Alright, stacking for the blue thing. I'm just holding all my stuff to be able to stun and interrupt this. That's my purpose here.
Okay. Now it's boss time. Activate this. That's already refreshed. Beer is going to need to be activated. Juju fire resistance activated. Grilled squid, dragon breath chili, and then we'll uh, unboon when it's time to pull the actual boss. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I should drink that. Elixir of Coalesced Regret. Mm -hmm. We got one nature potion and fire potion. How much fire is this? We're at 225 with this and this. Yeah, that should be good. Should be plenty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we're waiting we have nature protection and we're waiting the two minute cooldown for fire protection potion when we've got everyone with fire resistance nature protection and fire protection we can basically ignore all of fire maw mechanics and just um and just blast the boss like super hard and not have to run away from having too many stacks or whatever <laughs> Dragon Breath Chili also. to 258 with the fire resist totem. That's pretty good. Oh, let's hit this on Boon. Here he comes. Five, Trying to be out of line three, of sight for now. Three, two, and they'll pull him. One. Waiting for him to just be totally positioned before I even go into line of sight. Someone already exploded. Both of my protection potions are still preserved. Nature potion's gone. Re up that. He's dead. Never mind. I should have done another global on the boss to do more damage. Ancient leggings, claw the black drakes, stylines. <laughs> Reboon. Uh, do we want to claw the Black Drake? Not really. 
is better for tanking than Viscag? Maybe. Nah, I just think I don't want that stuff. So this is the damage taken. There's some people complaining that like some people maybe didn't use fire resistance. Ah, uh, so they like took too much damage. I'd say haha -ha was probably not using very much fire resistance. These people probably not using very much, but it can be somewhat RNG. You know, in terms of how much damage you actually take. You remember the chapter 1, 2, 3, and 4 for the paper you need to get from STV? Uh, I know of that quest, but I haven't done it in a very long time. Classic damage dealers not caring about their threat meter and just blasting. This is what happened on Fire Maw, or not Fire Maw, Broodlord too. It's like the boss was pulled in, the tank threat wasn't established, the range DPS just started cranking it immediately, and then it like pulled off of the tank, so then the positioning was bad. It's um it's actually kind of an exhausting thing to deal with when you when you raid a lot, and it's just every raid. It's not even a new mechanic, but it's like every raid people fail because they over threat the tank and screw it up for everyone else and it's just it's it's just exhausting because it's it's not a new blackwing lair mechanic it's not a new season of discovery mechanic it's not new anything it it's entirely an old mechanic that has existed since 2004 and people just still don't know how to be like okay you know I can't blast an 8,000 damage Shadow Bolt into the boss before the tank has even touched it. <laughs> this is just not a thing people understand. You know, that's why it's, you know, exhausting. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Our job is to interrupt the Spellbinder. Oh, someone's complaining about loot right now, I think. Someone complained about the shaman shield. Oh, yep. All right, yep, someone's complaining about the loot. Something about the shaman shield or something. They were they were upset. Oh, Remy, you did a redeem you did a change hat. I I apologize. I was uh slightly distracted. I got a hat change for you. There we go. Okay, we were definitely not positioned properly for this one. Let's see, where's the others? BNE was on that other one. I'm gonna be on this one. I'm polymorphed. Okay, still polymorphed. Still trying to run over there and interrupt those flame strikes, but still polymorphed. Too slow. Also, the kick got parried. That, no, that can't happen. The spell went off, then the kick went off, and then it got parried. Yeah, okay, that's what happened. A mob cannot block, dodge, or parry while it's casting a spell. Um, so you never fail to interrupt a in-progress spell cast because your kick got dodged or parried. That's not a thing that can happen. All right, sweet.
There we go, Spellbinder. Oh, yeah, see, this is bad. This is a line of sight blocker. If your healer's down here and you go up into this area, you're out of line of sight of your healer. Oh, this guy got square mark because the blue thing went on him, but square mark was the mark for the Spellbinder. They're still arguing about the shaman shield. Apparently, one of the shamans claimed it was Bis for Resto so that it shouldn't go to the other guy who wasn't main spec Resto. But now they're saying they went and checked on some Bis list and it's like, okay, it's not Bis for Resto. Um, so it's just big upgrade or something. I, look. I don't care what happens with the Shaman Shield, to be completely honest. Sheeped. Okay. Okay. That is Banjo-Kazooie in the background, that's correct. explaining how to do tech packs again. It's okay. So, some people went up here. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> All right, the raid leader's now explaining the tech packs, and then someone else is making sure the correct people are being blamed for... <laughs> for fucking up. Oh my god. <laughs> Am I the third tank? Okay. Relax just said he's doing it. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, give me a moment. Yeah, but in Pugs, I just roll main spec on my off spec stuff, because I get more loot that way. <laughs> uh, okay. Simon's ready. I'm assuming I'm doing far right. Okay, I'll do far left. Wait, one thing wasn't ready. That's ready. Okay. Okay.
All right, they're still arguing about the shaman shield. Yeah, so basically, I guess the drama boiled down to someone pressed BIS instead of main spec on an item that should have just, or like, sorry, pressed BIS instead of major upgrade on an item that should have just been major upgrade according to someone. I'm not totally clear. Doing it now. Uh, Simon's potion cooldown got another 40 seconds because I hit that fap on that pull. Oceans up. <laughs> Alright, we're waiting. Waiting for another potion cooldown. We got fire active. We're gonna need shadow active. Oh, the master elemental shaper is still there. He taught me how to make, um, elementium. Look at that. Legendary smelting. To have a banjo kazooie yeah we got the banjo kazooie soundtrack playing in the background you know Yeah, Warrior Rallying Cry is another great one to be popping right before the marks go out. Nixia Scale Cloak. They're still going over stuff. Yep. Did 
This is going to be a chicken mob to get uh, domesticated attack chicken activations. <laughs> I'm going to do a fortitude elixir also for just a little extra health here. <laughs> this is going to be the first time this group has even attempted to stack and cleave these two bosses. Um, so they're, they're being very deliberate, very careful, making sure everything is... Um, very clear on who's doing what and how it's supposed to go. Never mind, we just had someone disconnect. We were about, they were about to let us unboon and pull the boss, and then someone disconnected. <laughs> we, we almost got there. We almost got to the start of the race. <laughs> Unbooning. All right, so we're trying to hang out. The mob already has... Yeah, Warlock Pet. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many times you explain it. People still just kill the mob, even though they're explicitly told not to. They cast... There was a, a Shadow Word Pain on there, and there was a... There was a Warlock Dot on there. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. I think I was out of melee range for a little bit. I didn't do that was that was bad execution. I don't have any cleaves happening. Okay, that's a wing buffet. That's a go mechanic. Did I just hit an invisible wall? Wing Buffet was not good for us. <laughs> I think I was out of melee range, honestly, for part of that blade flurry. That's why I was so bad on damage. Oof. Sixth mark. Yeah, the Wing Buffet's caused a lot of damage loss, I think.
Okay. None of the helmets that I needed there. The trinket from Broodlord did not drop. Alright, this all sucks for me. Band of Force concentrated. Okay, we might... We have another chance at the helm. I don't think Venomous Totem can drop from the chests at the end. I can look at my other kills because I don't remember like actually ever getting hit by Wing Buffet while doing that. I wonder if our positioning I've done in the past was a little different. Well, let's see if I can come up with something. Well, it's, it's, I've definitely done a stack in Cleave Strat where I just never got hit by Wing Buffet and didn't even think about it. So I'll, I'll try to see if I can determine what's going on there. Ah, uh, sweet. I'm switching into my tank stuff. Alright, Simon's good to go on tank stuff. Which one do you want me on? Roger that. Okay. Ah. Oh, they said frost on the voice comms, but that actually didn't apply to tanks. I'm gonna die. I'm stunned. Take it away from the other mobs. Yeah, they called out Frost Potion, and I didn't think about it, really. I didn't think about how I was about to tank those mobs. I just, you know, they called Frost Potion. I pressed Frost Potion. That was it. Simon's got unmarked. Simon, big stun. Simon slept. No, I pressed a frost potion when they called for a frost potion like 30 seconds before the pull. I didn't think about it. Mm -hmm. Oops, stun again. No. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Okay. Fire protection, frost protection. Go back to our DPS build. Mm, let's see. I made some test weak auras. And I want to see if they work properly. I'm going to move them over here. Um, and then I'm going to keep DBM enabled. DBM should have its own timers too, but I think they're scuffed and bad. Free warning announce. What is stage two? Breath cast, breath cooldown, vulnerability cooldown. I actually think these are not going to be useful at all. Oh well, we'll run both of them. 
and see if my timers actually work at all. <laughs> yeah, calling out frost protection before that trash pack. You're right, Shreddingly. That has definitely happened before. <laughs> That's good, that's good, that's good, that's good, uh, that's good, uh, we're back in the DPS gear, we're back in the DPS spec, we want Crimson, no, we want Fan of Knives, because we, we're not going to use either of them for Chromagus, but we will use Fan of Knives for Nefarian. Actually, never mind, we don't wear that cloak for Nefarian. All right, we supposed to unboon here? For this check, I mean. For this check, I mean. <laughs> Nature, fire, frost. <laughs> okay. Alright, here we go. It's Chromagus time. Full world buffs out. Let's do it. It's a nature vault vanishing. Breath one soon. Nice. Okay. Bad energy total. Oh, that's a... Whoopsies. That was... I'm gonna have to look at that. Buff on boss. Corrosive. There. Ooh. Nope. Yeah. Okay, some, here's something that's slightly wrong. This is too low, so his cast bar was getting hidden behind my icons there. Fix that.
All right, primeval shoulders, shimmering gaita, empowered leggings, chromatic heart. No problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How's Blackwing Lair going until this unfortunate incident? Oh, you know, damage dealers pulling threat on bosses that screw up the positioning. So pretty much your average Blackwing Lair. You know, threat's a new mechanic that a lot of people don't really understand yet. They need to take some time to learn it. You know, it came out in 2004. So, I mean, they've only had uh, uh, 20 years to learn it, so um, it, it's, you know, it's reasonable to expect that people wouldn't understand how threat works yet, because they just haven't gotten used to it. Did you guys see how it was nature vulnerability? And my threat was building up, and then you could look at the threat meter on my screen and see that my threat was approaching the tank's threat, and then did you see what I did? I pressed vanish. That's crazy, right? That's crazy, dude. I did something about the threat value that I, cr I, I observed the threat value that I had and that the tank had, determined that there was a problem, and then I did something about it. Just play Hunter. Hunters pull threat more often than any other class in my experience and refuse to press feign death until the mob is actually at them. Maybe people don't know. What? Well, I was just ranting about this new mechanic that people haven't learned about yet, like threat. I mean, it's been out since 2004, which isn't that long ago. So, you know, maybe people just don't know how to do it yet. Yeah, well, it was... <laughs> oh, well, I was just explaining to my chat. I'll explain it to you, too. So when I was on Chromagus and it was nature vulnerability, I was looking at the threat meter and I saw War Crazy was on the top of the threat meter, or maybe it was Willy, I don't know, it was one of the W tanks. And then my threat was getting close to their threat and I was like, oh shit, my threat is approaching the tank's threat. I need to do something about it. And then I pressed vanish. But if I wasn't a rogue, what I would just do is like not press any buttons and throttle. Instead of, um pulling threat and scuffing the entire raid and wasting everyone's fucking time. <laughs> no, only the tanks need to be higher than the other tanks. <laughs> I had to explain it to the raid too, of course. There's no world bus left to unboon here. Gosh, wait, that means I, I actually lost DMF. Wait, no, I'll be able to get it in Elwyn on Monday before my next raid. <laughs> so it was like on Broodlord, there were people that screwed that up and on the trash packs, there were people that screwed that up too. What is threat meter? <laughs> yeah. How did you get aggro? I won. I was not the first person in the entire raid to die. I might have been the first person on Chromagus to die, but I didn't die to drawing threat. I died to actually failing to line of sight the breaths properly. I was a little distracted trying to look at my my ability timers that I thought I had working properly. Um, that I apparently did not. Let the games begin.
Not to you. It's private. <laughs> Threat meter? Recount doesn't show that. I guess it is... Uh, a new term for DPS meter. <laughs> yeah, yep, 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 yep. This game's just really hard, guys. Nefarian over there just blasting some shadow bolts, man. What a bitch ass motherfucker. Chilling there in ghost form so we can't even attack him. That's a coward's move, really. Definitely not getting a combat drop here. That's just the way it's gonna be. Ooh, we did for just a second, but I didn't press it at the right time. for a while. I don't normally call it out unless it's been dropped for a while. side, I guess. Ooh, Bellowing War. We can vanish that. Maybe if I'm paying attention on the next one, I'll vanish it. Too far to the left. That was a three-point in Venom. That's a mistake. Come on, bellowing roar, where is it? No, oh, there it was, but I had twin change target to do a totem. Uh, I'm never gonna vanish a uh, bellowing roar properly. Oh, he's just gonna be distracted with something else. I need to get out. Okay. All right. Ashkandi, Great Sword of the Brotherhood. Okay, they looted it all up. Uh, let's see. Head of Nefarian, Lachamir Ilrothis, Ancient Gloves, Draconian Robe, Primeval Chest, Ashkandi, 
So I think the main thing we want is Primeval Helm out of one of these chests. Okay. Then it's uh, Ancient Shoulder Pads Heart Striker. That's not good. Ancient Helm, Primeval Gloves, Ancient Leggings. Spine Shader, Legging, Lockamir. What's going on? Oh, that's another Lockamere. That's a Shadow Flame. Okay, so I think literally nothing good dropped for us in this entire run. <laughs> there were only two items that we, like, even needed. Which is Venomous Totem and Primeval Helm. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> 18 attack power, 6 stamina. There's two Lokomirs. Defense mace, uh, is this even good? It's off spec. Off spec tanking gear. I don't think I need any of those items. This jump is harder to do on female orc, and it's way easier to do on male orc. Hitboxes are different. Do rogues not want DFT? Not this build. Alright. Yeah. All right, we'll do some uh, loot distribution now. And I'll cry about my lost world buffs. It was, I mean, it was basically my own fault. I could have line of sighted the breaths better, but I was a little distracted looking at my timers versus the DBM timers. And really what I should have done is just paid attention to the boss's cast bar and tried to react to that. It was like, I ended up spending way too much attention looking at my own timers, trying to see if they were correct. But, oh well. Just like the players pulling too much threat, probably. It's kind of like that, but different, because it's not my fault. Okay. Um, and I can do nothing wrong. Okay. Obviously. Um... <laughs> Off-spec tanking gear. I think that's just all of them. That's a lot of primeval. <laughs> I think it's all off spec tanking gear. I'm just pasting that in everywhere.
Vintage Rasp, hello. Says so you're wondering, right now I'm mostly ZG and Molten Core gear and doing Mutilate build. Should I keep doing that or should I switch to it? You do whatever you want. If you want to play Backstab, play Backstab. If you want to play Saber Slash, play Saber Slash. If you want to play Mutilate, play Mutilate, man. You do you. Mutilate higher DPS than Backstab? If you have better Mutilate gear than Backstab gear, sure. Or maybe if uh, the fight and buff conditions are such that they favor mutilate, sure. But then sometimes they favor backstab and then backstab's a little bit more gear. And it doesn't... Fuck, man. Just play the game instead of the simulator. I don't know, man. <laughs> what? Yeah, we got a shitload of primevals. Just no primeval helm. That's the last one I need. Well, I don't need shoulder and I don't need bracer. And I don't need glove. Play what makes you enjoy the game. Play a different spec each week if you want to have change. Yeah, but I mean, the different specs need, like, different gear. So, sometimes you're not, you know, you're not going to do so well. And probably people, like, if you don't have the right gear for the, like, if you're not building towards that, you know, set. Like, the backstab builds want the draconic blood fang. And the mutilate build wants the core forged blood fang. <laughs> so on account of like literally all the loot that dropped was off spec for me i'm pretty sure i get nothing <laughs> Yeah, yeah, nothing that's a main spec upgrade for me dropped tonight, so that's fine. Mm-hmm. 
I, I like this. The loot distribution they do. They try to make sure everyone gets at least one item out of each raid. And then, like, other things might be, like, decided other ways. But I really like that in this guild, they, like, w when they're doing this, like, deciding who gets what, they just try to make sure everyone gets at least one item out of a raid. And I think I think that's, like, a great thing to prioritize. It, like, ensures everyone has a good time, you know? <laughs> cool way to do loot, yeah. I think they haven't even done all of the loot yet. I'm not sure. Not totally sure what we're waiting on. Or if it's just time to bounce. Yo, that thing is bigger than my character. Okay, not anymore. Okay, and actually still. Yeah, I, I did the fire water. That sword's still bigger than me. I apologize. I did a world boss earlier. I forgot that we did that after Black Moon Lair. Okay, I'm not the only one who made the mistake of getting saved before the raid. <laughs> Hang on, let me look at the... Oh, it does say Blackwing Lair to Thunderin. Yep, okay. That's my bad. Look, I was, I mean, I was focused on trying to get the Wind Striker so I could use the Wind Striker for Velastraz and do more damage in the raid. So I was like, all right, fresh lockout, let's go, let's do it. I forgot. It's the way I do a lot of DPS, it's because I have a threat meter installed. That's the secret. Would you use the Warlord gear if you had it? I don't know. I don't have it, so I didn't really even consider it. <laughs> oh, Migs, hello. How's it going?
That's kind of sweet looking gear, though. Forty six stamina. Holy, <laughs> that's a lot of stamina. Forty stamina on the shoulders. Bonus armor also. Twenty stamina set bonus. General's leather mitts, but he's using immune to disarm blood fang gloves instead. Um, two piece blood fang. 40 stamina, leather legs, 46 stamina, chest piece. That's crazy. It's so much stamina on those. 